Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about one of my local stores that I used to go to and trade credit in general, what is acceptable and what is not acceptable. So if you have a GP to go to to sell your cards, I always say sell cards in person. That way you don't get, um, a lot of times when you mail stuff, you might think it's one condition and then the person on the other end thinks it's another condition, but you can't really check up on it because you mailed it and you can't really say, oh, well, you're right or you're wrong and this is why. Only one person can have the card at the same time. Only one person can look at the card at the same time. But when you go to a GP and you're meeting someone in face-to-face, -face, uh, the conversation gets a lot easier and I feel like the prices are much higher because they're dealing with people and people who can also buy something right then and there. Now, mailing stuff and uh, its shipping is very expensive uh, if you're especially Power 9, Dual Lands. I used to buy list Dual Lands a lot uh, to Strike Zone. Uh, and I just physically go visit them. I physically go and drive to Scarsdale to visit them because I'm lucky enough to have a vendor who has very good buy list prices an hour away or like let's say it's like an hour and 15 minutes away from me. If you're not that lucky and your local game store, my local game store that I previously went to FNM uh, they offer 10% trade credit, uh, no, 10% cash, and then something like 20% trade credit. And that's very, very bad. So if you had a dual land that was worth $150, they would give you 15 in cash. And that was just the policy of the store. Now, there are the stores in inside Houston that offer you 40%. So Force of Will at the time was $70, they would offer you $28. And that's just for a higher more expensive cards, but they're not going to offer you for every single card. At my locals, they will give you 10% even for a dollar card, even for a 50 cents card. As long as the card is on TCG player and has a price, they will offer you 10% of it. So you have um, a divergence of strategy, right? If you have one or two really good cards, maybe you go to that place that offers you 40% in Houston. If you have a bunch of just random commons or uh, a valuable one dollar or two dollar commons and rares and mythics then maybe you go to the store that gives you 10 percent just because you want to get rid of it what is a acceptable percentage um, a lot of people are not going to do work they're not going to do the research and not going to really ship the card shipping the card is one of the most difficult things to do um, especially if it's you know a one or two dollar cards because you have to wait uh, waiting for getting payment can go anywhere between you know getting payment right then when it's, the order is fulfilled, when they receive it and they check everything and it's good, to two months. I had this experience with a vendor up north and it took two months. At one point I was just like, okay, just can you send me back the cards, which they refused to do. It all worked and stuff out, but at the same time, you know, if you need money right now, you need to take it to a local game store. You cannot put it in a mail and hope everything goes okay. And a lot of times you need money now because you want to buy the newest cards or you want to buy something else for yourself. So at the end of the day, when you talk about what is fair and what is not fair, you look at two uh, things, Nam namely, do you need money right now or can you wait a month or two uh, to receive money? And I'm saying a month or two as the worst case scenario. Obviously, you can get the money faster, but sometimes you know mail gets lost. Sometimes sorting. Sometimes they're very busy. Sometimes you guys are negotiating over conditions of the card that you sent them, which you thought it was a near mint card, which most cards are never near mint, especially the more valuable ones. And they say it was a heavy play. Well, then you guys have to figure out what is it? Is it SP or MP? A lot of times when uh, the second thing, so first is how time strapped are you? And second is you have a lot of valuable cards. You can split your collection into two parts. One, a collection of cards more than $10, which you're going to get a higher price for. You're going to ha have a higher percentage. So a store is going to give you way more for one $10 card than they are going to give you for 10 $1 cards. Or, and then the second pile is just volume volume of one to two dollar cards so unfortunately those are the options and my locals if you guys have different options you can leave in the comments below essentially the options are 40 percent on higher end cards that you want right now if you don't want to drive to scarsdale scarsdale is 
kind of a long drive and it's there's a lot of road construction so without traffic it takes me an hour and 15 minutes or traffic it could take me two hours I generally meet um, strike zone online at GPS uh, but unfortunately next year I've heard that they have cut down GPS tremendously uh, based on the fact that it's not financially responsible for them to go anymore that's a rumor but I'm pretty sure that is confirmed given the source that has told me about that. It looks like they're going to three or four GPs as opposed to every, almost every GP which they went to in 2016. And I believe it's due to cost. Anyway, bye guys.